Hey there. Um, so if you're an artist and you are thinking about exploring um, AI image generation, um, but you necessarily don't want to sort of explore the styles of other artists, um, this video is going to show you how you can create your own model based on your own art. And today I'll be focusing particularly on style. So we'll be training uh, how to create a model in your own art style. So in my case, um, a while back, I created a series of illustrations that I called Veracity um, that was based on personal experience um, in terms of dealing with anxiety and things like that. So um, here are some of the images that I created. And these are the images that we're gonna use to train uh, our model today. So they all have a basically a consistent style, which is very important uh, when training your own model based on a style. You want the style to be consistent. It will give you better outcomes. Okay, so, but you'll notice that a lot of the images are in different uh, formats. Some are portrait, some are landscape, some are square. So when you're training your own model, you have to make sure the images are square because um, all the images that have been trained into the sort of the main model were square images and they're all 512 pixels by 512 pixels. So uh, we have to match those dimensions. Let's look at the images that I resized already. Okay, so what I did here is I cropped them all and then you can see instead of cropping inside this image and not getting the full image, I expanded the canvas larger uh, to get the full image into the square. And I did that in Photoshop, uh, which you can do in, in any image editing tool. What I did also is I flipped each image horizontally. So that gets me from 12 images up to 24 images which is perfect because you need about 20 to 30 images to train a model. So let's go to the next step and see how we're going to train this model. This is a Google Colab notebook. Basically, it's a way to execute code. So this is the Dream Booth Stable Diffusion. So Dream Booth is actually the tool used to train your models. Uh, in Stable Diffusion. You can see this one was modified from Shivam Shiraro's repo. So we're going to use this to train the model. So the first thing you have to do is go up here and say copy to drive. You do need a Gmail account or a Google Workspace account in order to use this tool. So we'll copy it to the drive. Okay, once that's complete, you open it in a new tab. Okay, I'm gonna close this original one. Okay, so now we have it here and you can rename this whatever you want. Because I called the image series Veracity, I'm gonna call the Google Notebook that as well. Okay, so th though these can look fairly complicated on the outside, um, they're actually pretty straightforward once you get into them. So the first thing we're gonna do so this play button is basically how you run things. And basically you start from the top and you go down to the bottom and you click the play buttons to run each cell. Okay, so, but first we're gonna look at some of the settings. Okay, so for model name, it says Runway ML Stable Diffusion version 1.5. So we're gonna leave that as is. So this is basically the main diffusion model that you're gonna merge your images into. So you're not actually creating a model that is uniquely only your images, you're actually merging it into a larger model. So you might put images of a person in a particular style, but let's say you want to turn that person into a cat, well the larger model will have references to the cat. So you're actually merging your images and style into this larger model. FP16 branch, leave that the same. So the instance prompt, so this is when you're using the model later, these are the words, uh, the sequence of words that you're gonna use to call upon the style that you have created. 
we're focusing on style. So we're going to put in the style of. So this is where you have to add a unique name. And it has to be unique in the sense that this will not appear anywhere in the model. So when you call upon it, it knows exactly what you're talking about. So you can say in the style of, I don't know, Van Gogh, because it's going to go to the larger model and search all those images that have the word, the keyword Van Gogh. So you want something very unique. So since I call this series Veracity, what's often recommended is to use the word that you want, but take out the vowels. So I will use V R C T Y. And I'm going to put underscore zero two. So I know Y can be a vowel as well, but I think it'll be okay. I don't think there's anything called V R C T Y uh, in the larger model. Underscore zero two. So the reason I'm using underscore zero two is that I've created other models that have V R C T Y. And it's simply for me to be able to recognize uh, which model I'm using. The other important thing that I forgot to show you earlier is that you want your images to have the same prefix VRCTY so, uh, so that your images all match the name of your instance prompt. Notice VRCTY, etc. Okay, so we got that done. So the class prompt. So basically, what is it? Like this one says photo of a toy, but we're not we're not training on an object. We're training on a style. So we're just gonna put simply that. We're gonna put illustration style. Okay, so training steps. So it's recommended that for each photo that you have, you have 100 training steps. So this is the amount of steps that the program is going to analyze uh, each image. So for each image, it's gonna train it 100 steps. So it's gonna analyze it that many times before moving on to the next image. So since we have 24 images, that will be 2,400 steps. Learning rate, we leave it that as is. FP16, we want that checked so that we have a smaller model. Otherwise, it could be very large. Okay, so now that we've got that done, let's go back to the top here and let's run this. So when you're setting this up, it's gonna ask you to connect to your Google Drive. So you want to allow it. So once that's running, shortly afterwards, you'll see down here, it says choose files. So this is where we add our files. We'll highlight them, select them all and click open. Okay, so basically it's gonna load these files and that's all you have to do. Soon as these files are loaded, the model will start training. So I'm gonna let this run. And then uh, I'll pause the video and come back once the training's done, and then we'll look at the next steps. So I'm just going to jump in here um, while this is going. You can see at the very bottom here, it says 245 out of 2,400 steps. So if you want to watch it progress, uh, once it reaches 2,400, then the training will be done. See you in a bit. Okay, so we can see here, it's generated four images uh, based on the model. So you can see, if we look here, it says it took 15 minutes, which is pretty quick. Um, and if you wanna find the model, the model is saved to your drive, Dream Booth model, and it's called model.ckpt. So we'll look at that in a minute, but let's look at these images. So. This one here, it's pretty interesting. I'm gonna to go to our original images. It's not that we wanted to copy the images, but it's definitely got the style down. So that first image looks a little bit like this image here in terms of the posture, the person walking here and the body here. This image looks quite similar to this sort of starburst feel here. 
can see it here and then up here as well. And this, the face of this uh, man here looks very much like the face that's sitting behind the computer. So let's try prompting it and let's do a test to see how it performs. So they have a prompt here. We're gonna put, let's say, a man riding a bicycle. Now, this is where we have to include our prompt because we want it to prompt our style, the model we just made. So we have to put in the style of, and we called it VRCTY underscore zero two. Okay, so you can put a negative prompt as well. So let's say we want it to not have any color. So then you would put color there. So it basically removes the color, so it's negative. But for now, let's leave that like that. Okay, number of samples. Let's say we want the number of samples to be four. We want it to show four images. The guidance scale, we'll leave that as is. The number of steps, it's gonna look at the prompt to generate the image. So let's leave it at 30. And then here's the dimensions, 512 by 512. Since we trained our model on 512 by 512 images, let's leave it like that. And the seed, instead of 100, let's go minus one. So minus one will make it a random image. So it'll just produce random images. Okay, so let's press play. Okay, so we'll scroll down. Here it's generating the images. All right, so that's pretty good. As you can see, it does a pretty good job of capturing the style of the input images. Now, to be able to use this, so let me show you how to link it up. So you'll either want to use your model in another Google Colab notebook or a local installation of Stable Diffusion. So what you have to do is you go back to your drive and basically on your My Drive, your main drive, you'll see a file called model.ckpt. So that is your newly trained model. So basically you wanna right click on that and download it. And then basically it's gonna download onto your computer. And if you wanna find it on your drive, it's in Dream Booth model and then model checkpoint ckpt. Okay, so here we are. The model has been downloaded into our downloads folder. So I'm gonna rename that. VRCTY underscore O2. There we go. So I'm gonna copy that. And I'm gonna put it in my Stable Diffusion Web UI folder here at the very bottom. Go to Models, Stable Diffusion, and then I'm gonna paste it in there. There we go. So now when I go to Automatic 11, Stable Diffusion, the local installation, and if I refresh this, there's the model. So I select it. It's gonna load up. Perfect. So now let's try prompting it. A close up of a man wearing a scuba mask. So in the style of, so we have our instance prompt here. So we called it VRCTY underscore zero two. And I'm gonna add another qualifier, call it clear eyes, just so the eyes look good since it's a close up.
All right, so that's definitely in the style of the illustrations. Let's compare. So definitely black and white, same kind of line work. This is very similar. Okay, let's try a selfie of a group of friends. So in the style of brcty underscore zero two. So we'll boost our sampling steps to 40. And let's see. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Definitely in the style of the source images. Let's try something else. Let's add clear eyes, detailed face. All right, that's interesting. I think it must be picking up on the word group because this kind of looks like a band photo, like a band superimposed on a CD or something. So let's try one more. Instead of a group of friends, let's try a selfie of a cat. All right, so there we go. So you can prompt pretty much any type of object or subject, and it should come up pretty close to the style of your training images. So there we go. Just to fill you in, this interface here is made by Automatic 1111. And if you want to find out more information on how to use it or <clears throat> how to find it and install it on your locally on your computer, this runs locally, it doesn't run uh, in the cloud, so it's uh, all on your machine, so all your images stay on your machine. Um, if you wanna learn how to do that, um, I left some links in the description, and um, there's a few good videos there that you can look at uh, where people explain how to use the settings and how to install it and all that kind of thing. So rather than me repeat a lot of what's already been done, um, these people will be able to help you with that. There's some great stuff there. All right, I hope this was helpful. And um, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave a comment below and um, I will respond to your comment. And yeah, hope this was helpful. Have a great day. Bye-bye.